Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GamerTube, and welcome back to our Five Nights at Freddy's character concept series. So in today's video, the character we're looking into is Melvin Mantis. So we're looking into this character's backstory, their location, their gameplay mechanics, and all that good stuff as well. And as always, I will just state that everything I say in these videos isn't actually tied to the overall FNAF lore and universe. These are pretty much just some cool creepy stories we get to tell, and we hope you enjoy. And lastly, before we start today's video, do be sure to subscribe to GamerTube as it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. It also keeps you up to date with all the videos that we post. Alrighty, well, let's get into the character concept of Melvin Mantis. So far in our FNAF character concept series, we've been introduced to the Insect Kingdom Pizzeria. This bug-themed pizzeria was home to a number of insectoid animatronic characters. So far we've met Bella B, Roy the Rhino Beetle, and Alex the Ant. All of these crazed animatronics had their own reasons to hunt down and attack the player. So far, our Night Guard has done a good job of fending off all these fearsome foes. But now, we come to our next character at the Insect Kingdom Pizzeria. And this character is Melvin Mantis. Melvin, of course, was modelled after the famous green insect, the Praying Mantis. The Praying Mantis is most famous for their large claws and eyes. The Engineers went with the famous green colour scheme with a touch of yellowy green as well. Melvin's claws were quite unique. They were one of the only Freddy Fazbear animatronics to have such extravagant and interesting limbs. Underneath the soft material padding laid their sharp metallic endoskeleton. Melvin's endo in particular was quite sharp and dangerous. But fortunately, the extra strong material covering them would be quite hard to rip. Their eye colour was quite interesting as well. They oddly resembled another famous Freddy Fazbear character's eyes. Or should we say, eye. Once again, the engineers didn't give Merlin any large mandibles. They instead decided to go with the open closed jaw system with some pointy teeth. A praying mantis having teeth didn't really make a whole lot of sense. But then again, what Freddy Fazbear character does make any sense? Melvin's personality traits were a little shy, mysterious, active, and fast moving. So up on stage we have Roy on main vocals, Bella on the maracas, and Alex on the guitar. All the characters would perform on the main stage as they sing their jolly birthday tunes. But as for Melvin, they didn't perform on stage. They instead had their own sectioned off area. And this section was Melvin's Magic Garden. This was a section of the pizzeria that was filled with multiple plant and garden themed characters that would sing for all the children. All of these characters were wooden cutouts with motors to make them move. Melvin's Magic Garden was more or less a tunnel that the guests would walk through and would loop back into the main area of the pizzeria. There would be plenty of fun characters for all the children to look at and enjoy. But the main character in the Magic Garden was of course, Melvin. Whilst in the Magic Garden, Melvin would wear a wizard's hat and a wand in their claw. The story was that Melvin was a magic wizard that brought all of these plants to life. As far as the pizzeria was concerned, Melvin's magic garden was considered a success. It was popular amongst the young guests and sold a fair amount of merch. So overall, Melvin was considered to be quite the trouble-free character. That was until the pizzeria found out about Melvin's strange obsession. So as we all know, of a night time, all the characters at the Freddy Fazbear Pizzeria are switched into a free roam setting. This would ensure that all their joints and servos wouldn't stiffen or lock up. All the insect characters went about doing their own things. But Melvin would mainly stay inside the magic garden. They didn't know what it was, but something always drew them towards the magic garden. More specifically, it was a certain point on one of the walls that always drew Melvin in. For hours on end, they would always stare at this point of the wall. Over time, eventually Melvin took it upon himself to start chipping away at the wall. 
Night after night, they would slowly start to dig a hole into the wall. The other animatronics would stare in confusion as they did this strange activity. Fortunately for Melvin, the employees never caught on. This was due to Melvin cleverly placing his poster over the hole. So every night, Melvin would return to the Magic Garden and carry out their task. They couldn't explain why they needed to keep digging. It was almost like something was calling out to them. Like it had control of them almost. After slowly chipping away at the wall night after night, the repair workers started to catch on to what they were doing. Over time, the tips of Melvin's material claws started to wear away, revealing his metal endo. The repair worker deemed it okay for now, but if they wore away any further, they would need to have the material replaced. So as the nights went on, Melvin started to make much more progress. The hole they dug in the wall started to get larger and deeper. Eventually, the more they dug, the more the material finally wore away. With their metal endo exposed, they could dig much more effectively. This was great. Now they could finally get their work done even faster. The next day, the repair worker knew something fishy was going on. Melvin is purposely damaging their own claws, and they didn't know why. The time came to eventually replace their material claws. The repair worker needed to order them in and get them custom made. This would take a few days. So in the meantime, they needed to ensure that Melvin wouldn't damage them any further. The repair worker told the night guard about Melvin and insisted they keep an eye on them to figure out how they're damaging their claws. So as the night time came, Melvin decided tonight was the night. They would finally figure out what was on the other side of this wall. With the metal tips of their claws exposed, they would be able to dig extra effectively. As they dug into the wall, they gave it their all, digging as hard as they ever had before. They clawed and even kicked at the wall until their material skin was no more. They were almost there. They were finally going to satisfy their burning urge to find out what was calling out to them, to find out what wanted to be unearthed. Just as they delivered the final blow to the wall, they suddenly power down. It was the night guard. They caught them digging into the wall and immediately powered them down. It was extremely risky for the night guard to do, but they managed to turn Melvin off unscathed. What on earth was Melvin doing? Why were they furiously digging into the wall? Regardless of the reason, the night guard knew it would be best to put Melvin out of order until further notice. The employees sectioned off the hole in the wall and closed the magic garden temporarily until they could get Melvin repaired. Meanwhile, Melvin was furious. They were so close. Only a couple more strikes and they would have dug their hole. If it wasn't for that damn security guard, they would have accomplished their goal. They knew they were never going to complete the hole as long as the night guard was in the picture. So Melvin decided first they take out the night guard and then complete their task at hand. So now we come to the core gameplay segment of the video. Like always, the gameplay in these videos is modeled after the classic FNAF formula of observation and management. So throughout the night, our security guard character has been fending off all the crazed animatronics. They've had to deal with Bella B, Roy the Rhino Beetle, Alex the Ant, and now Melvin Mantis. So throughout the night, Melvin would be waiting patiently behind their out of order curtain. They'd be waiting for their other animatronics to put the pressure on the night guard. And then when the time was right, they'd strike and make their swift attack. So just like Foxy in the original FNAF, the player would have to keep an eye on the out of order curtain. In the first few nights, Melvin wouldn't be as active. But when it comes to the third, fourth, and fifth night, that's when Melvin would attack more frequently. The player would need to keep an eye on them as they slowly exit from their curtain. As soon as the player sees no sign of Melvin and an open curtain, they'd have to act quickly. So Melvin would always be attacking from the left-hand side. 
The player would be able to see them on the camera charging through the hallway. Or they'd be able to hear their rapid footsteps. The player would need to immediately shut the door before they burst in. After a failed attempt, they'd return back to their curtain. Melvin's gameplay mechanic would be quite simplistic, but tough to deal with. In the later nights, they would get much faster. So whilst having to deal with all the other characters, the player needs to keep an eye and an ear out for Melvin charging down the hallway. If they get overwhelmed and forget to check on them, they'd be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. So I think Melvin Mantis would be a great addition to the Insect Kingdom character roster. They're definitely a fearsome looking character that would really put the pressure on the player and cause a fair amount of panic and jump scares. Alrighty everyone, well that's all we have for today's video, I hope you enjoyed and if you did, please consider leaving a like, commenting and subscribing as it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. As always, let us know in the comment section down below what you thought of Melvin Mantis and what you'd like to see going forward. Alrighty everyone, well to the next video, I'll catch you later, bye.